Right. Um, before I start uh, properly, um, I'm Matthew Phillips from uh, uh, Nominate Software in Durham, and uh, I'm going to be demonstrating uh, mainly uh, Risk OSM, which I have to say is a product which has mainly been written by my wife, Heather. Um, I did a certain amount of work on it, um, particularly around the data conversion aspects of it, uh, but it's largely um, her, her work. Um, so if I look a bit um, confused as to what I'm doing sometimes with the new features that she's added in the last week, uh, that's because <laughs> I haven't necessarily got to give it completely myself. Um, before I start, uh, could I just have a quick show of hands as to uh, who attended uh, the demo or saw the software at Wakefield? Just a few people, okay. And how many people have, uh, have bought it? Okay, great. So that, that's useful to know because I, I, I won't spend... Uh, I, I, if, if everyone had put their hands up, I'd have then been talking mainly about the new features. Uh, but that's just a lot of people won't have seen um, seen very much of it where we will start at the start. Um, but I will be talking about the new features as well. So, um, OpenStreetMap. Uh, you may not have heard of OpenStreetMap, or you may have heard of it, but it is roughly the equivalent of Wikipedia for maps. Volunteers all around the world are putting map data into a wonderful system, uh, and it can be used by anyone for almost anything because it's uh, open data. Uh, what we uh, have done is taken uh, the data for OpenStreetMap and transformed it so that it can be rendered on RISCOS as draw files um, in a nice interface uh, that you would kind of expect uh, for navigating maps like people are used to on um, browsers that support JavaScript in a big way and all that kind of thing. Um, so we supply um, this OSM, here it is. Um, and the data uh, is downloaded or uh, copied from CD and resides on your machine. For the British Isles, it takes up about 600 megabytes of disk space uh, because there is a lot of detail in some parts of the country. Other countries, uh, there are um, smaller downloads, uh, smaller quantities of data. So let's start off with some basics. Um, how do we open a map? Um, the system has a big gazetteer extracted from all the place names that are in uh, OpenStreetMap for the British Isles. Um, and uh, it also now has, uh, uh, from this release, uh, postcode data for Great Britain. It doesn't include uh, Northern Ireland or the Channel Islands or the Isle of Man as yet, because we haven't got the data set for that. Uh, so if we uh, start typing the name of the place, um, you will see um, that's uh, a sort of uh, drop-down menu appears. You can, once you've identified the right one, you can hover over with the mouse or the click, or alternatively, you can use the up and down arrows with the keyboard and, uh, and click the one that you want. Um, alternatively, if you happen to know the latitude and longitude of location, you can put that in. There's, a, there's also a UK grid reference um, box, so you can enter grid references. If you want to put a postcode in, uh, you just type the postcode, and uh, if recognised, it will put in the latitude and longitude for you. So um, we'll come back to some of the other options a bit later. Draw map, loads the data off the disk, and before you will render the map. And that's a draw file uh, rendered within the RISC OSM interface. So um, we can do things like um, export uh, a draw file. Uh, which you can then load into draw, or of course put in your web, process, uh, web processor or whatever else supports it. As you will have seen there, there's also an export option for sprites, which I prefer to have a sprite. Um, there are a few other options there that we probably might come to at this time. <laughs> um, we have um, lots of standard ways of navigating the map. So um, if I this is really hard to demonstrate because, of course, you can't tell what mouse keys I'm pressing. <laughs> so I'll have to describe this. Um, if I drag with the select key held down, the, uh, the, the, the map will move about. And when I release, it will, down, it will load any more data it needs and render the map. 
Okay? Um, if we double click with the left button on a particular area, it will zoom into the next scale. If we double click with the right button, it will zoom out. I can use the scroll mouse, zoom out or zoom in. Um, we can use the plus and minus keys, I think. And also, one which uh, Hilary had forgotten about, because she hadn't even put it in the manual, but one of the users uh, mentioned, um, you can use the cursor keys and move left, right, up, or down. Um, it's now in the manual. Uh, <laughs> she obviously had added that as a feature and forgotten to document it, and someone found it. So, uh, so that's handy. Um, now, you might think, I've got a PC, I can just use Google Maps, That's, that will do for me. RISC OSM can do a lot of interesting things because it's vector data, it can do a lot of interesting things which other systems uh, can't do so easily. Um, so, for example, uh, if we just um, zoom in on this area, um, we've got um, a place there called uh, Menai Bridge. Um, if we hover over it uh, with uh, this info button turned on, you'll see um, that it says, um, it, it, this will show you the tags and data that are inside OpenStreetMap. And it's, what it's saying there, it says name Menai Bridge, and it says name colon CY Porthai 3, which is the Welsh name for the place. Um, now, um, in the choices in uh, Risk OSM, you can decide what your preferred language on the map is. You could have none, in which case it will just put up to the things which are tagged as name. Um, you can put English, in which case if there is, if you're in a foreign country where there's an English version of the name, it will display that. So Munich, for, Munich, for example, is one, one, one you would find in Germany. Not that we can convert Germany, because Germany is far too big for OSM, the conversion process to but anyway. Uh, that's what you would see. So if we click to switch to Welsh um, and uh, set the choices, it will redraw the map and uh, we'll now say, see it says Port Eithwin. So if you have a particular preference and the data are available, then, then you can get that kind of um, difference. Um, we have provided a number of style sheets as well. There are, there are various different style sheets hasn't been developed very much yet. The style sheet language uh, is documented in the manual, so there's plenty of examples as to how, um, how, how that works. So you can design your own style sheets, um, which uh, can render them out however you like, change all the colors and things. We're thinking about whether there would be a way of doing a nice style sheet editor to make it easier. It's, it's a complicated business, so it's not gonna come soon. Um, what may come a bit sooner is perhaps something where you can turn individual features on or off. So if you don't want to show golf courses, you can untick and they will vanish from the map or you know, that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, just to give you an example of styles, uh, I'm going to go to um, Benton uh, in North Tyneside, uh, which is where my parents and law live. And uh, it's intersected by uh, a couple of uh, railway lines, as you can see there. Um, we have a special style here called railways, which will re-render the map completely differently. You see all of the roads have uh, gone, gone a bit paler. Uh, there's a red railway line going through here. That's red because it's uh, electrified uh, high voltage, I think. And this one is orange, which is the Newcastle Metro system, and that's a different style of um, infrastructure, and then there's a black line there, which I think is a freight line or something. So you can see that immediately you can have a completely different style. Um, I I did a designed a, a style here, uh, which is sort of very plain. Uh, doesn't have very many features on it uh, because um, back in July, um, a group I'm involved with, we had a stand at. Um, the Eco Festival, and we were we, we printed out a large A1 map, which I generated using Risk OSM as a PDF. Uh, printed this as a PDF and got it printed out on a big printer. And uh, we invited people to draw on the map uh, where they found it easy to cycle, where they wanted cycle routes, that kind of thing. So you know, there's all sorts of wonderful things you can do with this with, with this information. Um, so yeah. Um, Right, 
there's lots and lots of other features. Uh, let's get some of the other demo stuff. For example, um, if you've got a smartphone or a GPS device, uh, then you uh, can probably produce GPX files. Um, GPX files are sort of XML. Uh, what's going on with that? Um, that's not very nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that should have really loaded Zap or something like that, but uh, clearly it's completely taken down the whole machine. Right, this, there will be an intermission now while we restart. <laughs> <laughs> I could do some talking, even so, without the computer, I'm sure we could do, do a bit of that. Um, while the data is free, um, we do uh, charge for the application itself, so it's £20 for RISC OSM uh, on CV. Um, and uh, but the data um, you can uh, you can download the data from our website and we uh, or or have it supplied on the CD. It takes quite a while to download the data, as you might imagine. Uh, I think when I tried it last time, it was about half an hour download for British Isles, but our broadband connection isn't the fastest. Um, we try and update the data about every three months. Um, there is a conversion program that you have to run to convert the data into suitable format. Um, we do all of that for you, of course, for the data which we supply on our website. But if you want to, uh, the, the conversion program you can, you can download from our website and you can run other data sets through it. So if you wanted to, we, we have one user who has uh, converted the whole of the continent of Africa and is, has supplied this. Um, on some Raspberry Pis which he was sending out to Uganda. So, um, and the great thing is, is as it's free, map, free mapping data, you can do anything you like with the data once you've got it, and anything you like with the maps. Um, so there's no restrictions on that, which is great. Um, okay, I won't show you what the inside of the XML file looked like, which uh, wouldn't have been desperately interesting at any rate. Let's uh, just instead uh, drop the uh, thing on the on, on risk OSM. So this is this is an XML file which someone has recorded on a GPS device. Drop it on there, it loads the right area of the country and plots the track on the map. You can see this dotted line, it's not very clear on this screen here, but you see they started off here, uh, walked along there, and ended up over there, I think. I'm not quite sure why there's two checkered flags. Um, but maybe there's two tracks, if we'll be able to say, hold on, yeah, there are, in fact, um, two tracks. There's a green one and a red one, so you can have more than one of them now. Um, we, we now got this new feature, um, so you can add, uh, so you can draw out your own uh, tracks directly on the map, if you want to. Um, so you can, uh, as you can see, as I'm moving along there, uh, the length is counting up, um, so you can quite easily trace to see whether the walk you're intending to do is going to be a suitable sort of length. Um, you can put in some descriptive information there, I'm not going to bother. At the moment, anything you draw in this system can't be saved because Hillary ran out of time before the show, uh, but you can, uh, that will be coming soon, I hope. Um, but it's, it's, quite, uh, it's still quite useful just for, for measuring uh, distances. And uh, in case anyone asks, we can use metric and imperial units. So um, there we have a scale bar now in uh, metric and imperial, and the distance is here 3.8 kilometers, 2.4 miles. If you draw out an area, uh, then it will show you, once you've completed the area, um, it will show you the distance, um, yeah, sorry, the, it will show you the perimeter. You know, the window is widening, doesn't it? we better get that one sorted. That was uh, last minute testing, didn't reveal really that problem. Um, but we got the area here, 154 <coughs> hectares, 379 acres. We try and use sensible sort of units for the, for the size of the thing, so it will go up into kilometres squared if you've gone further out, or, or, or metres squared if you're looking at a house, or something like that. Right, um, what else can we show you? Oh yes, while we're on the subject of GPS data, um, We've got um, photos. Um, 
if you uh, take photos with a smartphone uh, these days, it will often record the um, it records the uh, position uh, that the photo has taken. Um, so as you can see, it's now plotted these on the map. Uh, if I uh, control click to follow the link, uh, we'll then <coughs> see a picture of um, Preben's Bridge in Durham. Uh, or, uh, oh, there's more than one picture over there. Yeah, this one I think, um, Durham Cathedral, although this is a renowned cathedral, it is not renowned for leaning like that. <laughs> I think the camera must have been, you know, smartphone cameras have been pretty bad about the speed at which they, uh, they take the photos, so that's what must have happened there. It's not really like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, that, that's, that's quite nice. And if you want to, um, if, you, if, you, if you've got a load of these loaded and they've, they've moved off the map, as you can see, they've greyed out, you can, you can pick a selection like that and uh, um, hide them, delete them, or you can choose draw map, and that will then move the map back around those uh, particular uh, items and make sure that they're on screen. Um, so that's, that's quite a nice feature. Someone really needs to go and remove the old Falling Bell Museum of Archaeology because it is shut now, and perhaps that better. Hillary uh, contributes to Open Street Map uh, in areas that we visit, and so no, I'll, I'll suggest to her that we might uh, remove that from the map because uh, the, the archaeology exhibition is now up on Palace Green instead. So, you know, it's only up to date as people make it, but it's amazingly up to date in some places. And I'm just going to show you uh, Easton in uh, Nottinghamshire. Uh, if we zoom in to a higher scale, or oh, perhaps even more than that, um, draw a map of central Beeston. Um, at the moment in Beeston there is a uh, extension of the Nottingham tram system going in and um, if we uh, if we zoom in you'll see that uh, they've uh, I've got to go even further um, detail um, there is the tram line actually in and then these dotted lines here are where they still got to join up the gaps and someone uh, some fanatic around there is, is, is keeping this modernly up to date uh, as, to, as to where they've actually got to with the tram tracks um, as, as well as um, plain map data being in OpenStreetMap, there can be quite a lot of other uh, interesting information. Uh, for example, you will often find links to websites uh, or Wikipedia articles. So if we hover over um, St. John's Church here, control click will open and that serves the, the uh, website. Um, and, and there we are, there's Beeston Parish Church. Um, over the bus stops, um, the, the bus stop data, I'm just going to show you the data behind this. Uh, whoops, there we are. Uh, it says bus stop, stop seven, Naptan code, uh, NTSGMWPT. It's got a shelter and it's wheelchair accessible. So that's all of the data that there is on the bus stop in there. Um, if I just turn that off. Uh, if we control click over it, uh, with pointy, pointy hand, there's a web link. Control click will bring up a web page which, when I tried it half an hour ago, was not working, but when I tried it an hour ago, it was working. And uh, looks like it's still not working. But this, in certain parts of the country, will actually show you live information about the next bus from the stock. So that's quite, quite handy if it, if it works. Oh, there we are. There we are. So, uh, uh, when I demonstrated this at Wakefield, I was able to uh, click on a bus stop that was over here, which seems to have now vanished from the map. And uh, the great thing was it showed you there were no buses coming along at all. And that was entirely logical because the road was closed for putting the tram track in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, what else does it do? Well, there's a lot of panel. I can tell you, we'll, we'll have a quick look at the manual because it's got a manual which tells us everything. Um, we've done opening a map, drawing the map, moving around the map, changing the size of the map and the text. Oh yeah, but yes, you don't have to just have um, A4 size. You can um, increase the size of your map up to A0 or put in custom dimensions if you wish. Um, the 
level of detail that you get on the map depends. Um, basically, it's um, when, when we say A4, that's what it would be printed out at if it was a draw file exported as a draw. Now, obviously, you, because it's vector graphics, you can then enlarge it further within draw or whatever you're using to print, and uh, it could come out different from one in 1585. So that's not a very helpful scale, is it? Let's go for let's go. What, 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 one in uh, 1250 is, is the scale. Of course, that's the scale only if it's printed out at the natural size for the draw file. Uh, you can you can um, enlarge it or not. Um, if you because because draw because printed maps are you know there's a lot more density on paper than there is on screen. You might find when you print it out that well, actually it's perhaps not as detailed as you expect a map to be. So it's a difficult tension between how much you can see on screen and how much you can see on the map. And if you look at uh, some of the online sites, you'll find actually that the um, they tend to enlarge the OS style maps so that they're much bigger than they would be if they were printed out because of the difficulty of getting all that information on the screen. But there is a little plus button here. This doesn't change the scale of the draw file, uh, but it does zoom you in so that you're seeing exactly the same rendering, uh, bigger on screen. So uh, that's that's an option if you're if you're wanting to. Because, because if you zoom in, it will change the style. You'll get possibly other features appearing that weren't present at a, at, a, at a further out distance. For example, if we go out a couple of zoom levels, then I would suspect that the uh, cycle racks, which were on uh, by the... Uh, <coughs> I know the cycle racks are still there, but eventually they will disappear because cycle racks are not things that you want on really um, small-scale maps. Ah, what else? Um, web links, we've done quite a bit of web links. Uh, highlighting features, oh yeah, how about this? Um, we can use um, this, the spotlight tool here, and you can search for, uh, suppose you, you know that um, Hallam uh, Road is somewhere in here, but you can't actually see it and all of that. I, I, I can type in search Hallam, and it'll highlight it there. Oh, it is also search. It is also highlighted here, and that's because it's um, Fred Hallam Limited, the Greengrocers, <laughs> um, which I ought to know because I was uh, at school with uh, the son of Mr. Greengrocer. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a Cropidus apparently down there as well. So yeah, lots of different Hallams. Um, you can also select by means of the tags that are used to make up OpenStreetMaps. So, for example, if you want to find all of the um, scout groups, then they're highlighted there. That's um, six pieces in scout group, that's eight pieces in scout group. I think it was possibly another one, but anyway. Um, land use, we could, we could highlight all of the grass and uh, there's stuff which is recorded as nothing apart from being grass. Um, telephone exchange, uh, yes, railway under construction, those are the bits that are still to be built. Um, sport, of course, all these options are sensitive to what is actually on the map, so um, more things will appear if you're in different places. So if we highlight all of the uh, cycleways, uh, there's not very many, but if we highlight the residential streets, or we can highlight the bus stops. There's a lot of bus stops, so they are. So, so um, you can pick out extra information. And while, while you're in this highlighting mode, if you hover over, then it gives you the full information about any of the particular features. Um, the full information can also be obtained by that one there, but then it'll tell you about anything that your mouse is over, which can get a bit distracting. Oh yes, uh, a feature which is new since Wakefield, uh, but I think was released a month or two ago, is the ability to put on um, uh, element survey uh, grid, national grid. So we click on that there, and the national grid uh, lines will be overlaid when the map's finished drawing. Um, you'll find, uh, because, oh uh, yeah, 
This is because this is middle of the country, they look very horizontal. Uh, when you get to the edges, they start slanting one way or the other because actually all the survey grid reference, uh, you know, grid lines don't actually go north south exactly all the way across the country. Uh, this is exact north south, but well, yeah, you can see that it's higher up there. The line is coming slightly down across the screen there. Try the next before we find something very different. Well, we might well. Um, We'll go for Inverness. There it is on the edge of the forgotten name of that bit of water. Yep, there we are. I don't quite sure why it hasn't got a name on it. Anyway, right, now it's, it's slanting, slanting very much the other way. Um, yeah, uh, well, what else is there to say about it? Um, I think I might have whistled through everything. Uh, perhaps a little bit more quickly than I should have done. <laughs> I was about the third one down, but if you haven't got risk loss five, what difference is it make? Right, yes. If you haven't got risk loss five, at the moment the software um, relies entirely on the WIMP slot for memory. We haven't um, written it in a way which allows for a dynamic area to be used which means that you have a limit um, of 26 megabytes or so on the memory that can be used by the application. At the moment, it is using uh, 55 megabytes, so you would have run out of memory uh, by this point on, on RISCOS 4 or RISCOS 6. If you ask have they got plans to deal with that, uh, I, I'm not quite sure how to go about it really because it's all written in C. It's very much easier for us to use the rim slot than it is to mess about with a dynamic area. So it would complicate the program quite a bit. Um, it's technically possible, I'm sure, um, but I haven't got my head around it yet. And we've been busy adding other features which will allow the functionality to pe for the people who are already using it on RISCOS 5 as the priority. Um, RISCOS 5 can be run on virtually all the hardware you can think of uh, these days. Um, but of course, people haven't installed it on this PCs very much because um, it would mean that uh, you'd lose access to all the old software that doesn't work on RISCOS 5. Um, RISC PC is a bit underpowered for, for this software because it does require quite a lot of churning of uh, data. Uh, but obviously an emulated solution like Virtual Acorn would probably work very well, apart from the fact that you're limited to the, to the memory limit. So yeah, that's, that's what the problem would be there. Uh, we haven't got any immediate plans to do anything about that, um, because as I say, I don't know quite how much work it would take, and I haven't started thinking about it yet. Sorry? Thanks for reason to buy these. Oh, yeah, well, um, <coughs> yes, I mean, it partly. Well, I mean, if we, if we were using virtual ACOM at, at home, we'd be, uh, we'd be addressing this a bit sooner, I'm sure. But the only risk us um, four or six machine we have is a RISC PC, and it only tends to get used for um, games for the children and Sibelius. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there hasn't been really the impetus from our point of view. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is still quite useful on this PC. Uh -huh. It's pretty sensible where you use it. Yes, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you go in uh, one in 10,000 or something like that, if you don't try to look at the whole of the country all at once and don't move about and, you know, drag about and explore the way I've been doing just now, uh, you, you, can, you can use it and you can get useful stuff out and do useful things with it. Um, yeah. Any any questions? I'll take questions now. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, one logical next step would be to turn uh, this into a an OpenStreetMap editor, so you could then submit. Uh, stuff back to the project and uh, improve the map for everyone else who's using it on other platforms as well. And um, that would be a nice idea, 
but there are a couple of obstacles. One is that in order to fit the data into a reasonable size, we have thrown away a lot of stuff. There is masses of extra, I mean, you saw that information for the bus stops, the NAPTAN code. Most bus stops have about uh, 10 or 11 other pieces of data attached to them. Um, uh, we got rid of most of them because it was just taking up a lot of space when you converted it and wasn't stuff that you want to render on the map. Um, so if we were going to do that, you'd have to be able to get it to connect to the web, get that information for that node pulled back down again, and then you could edit it and then send it back, which could be quite complicated. Um, so yeah, that's not going to happen very soon, <laughs> if at all. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you want to contribute to OpenStreetMap, the easiest ways of doing it at the moment are using a web-based web editor um, on a PC or a Mac or a Linux machine. There's also a Java-based um, editor called Jozen, which is going to be run on any of those platforms as well. <coughs> At the moment, for risk loss, I think it's, it's a bit hard to achieve that. Yeah? You should import your GPX file. Can you talk about exporting? Exporting GPX, yeah, exactly. Um, it would be good to be able to plan a route, like I demonstrated with the pin thing, you know, um, plot a route um, and then export. And we fully intend to add that. I expect Hillary is hoping to do it by Christmas, providing she doesn't run out of time for things like Christmas presents and stuff. Exactly. But, um, so yeah, this is, this is um, uh, there we are, there's our route. We could export that as GPX, and then it could be loaded into a, a GPS device. Um, uh, that would be moderately doable. Um, she was intending to have these things saveable by the time of the show, but we ran out of time, so uh, it will be coming soon. As OpenStreetMap is updated, do you have to download the whole set of data again? Or At the moment, unfortunately, the only way we have of supplying it is as a complete download. So yes, uh, it does mean a you know a big, big download if you want to do updates. Um, in theory, uh, it ought to be possible for me to come up with an, a way of just providing differences, so that if a, a node or way or relation in the system has been deleted, it would flag its deletion, and if it was, uh, you know, all, all of that kind of thing. The difficulty is really in the way that the uh, data is distributed in the files that we supply. Um, I said we have to do a lot of processing. That's in order to make it render fast enough um, on screen. Because if you download the data from the whole of the British Isles, what you get is a list of all the points on the map. And that's not just bus stops, it's also corners of roads. Um, you get, then get a list of all of the routes, which are joined up points, and a list of all the relations, which is something a bit more complicated. Um, the points are in order of when they were created on OpenStreetMap. So they're dotted all around the country in a completely random way. Um, and obviously, in order to render a map out of that, we have to structure the data differently so that the data for a particular area are closer together. So um, we reorganize the data with the OSM convert application that I mentioned earlier. It structures it into squares across the country and into sub-squares as well for, as you zoom further in, so you don't have to load too much information off the disk. And uh, because of all that restructuring, it gets a bit harder to apply the updates in that kind of way. So uh, we're supplying updates to the data on CD uh, today, which avoids uh, anyone having to do the download if they want to avoid half an hour download. Um, I, I was offering also, if anyone's brought a USB stick, you can have any data I've got with me. Um, I've got uh, Switzerland, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, you know, several countries in Europe we've done. I mean, we, we, we'd quite like to be able to do the whole of Europe, um, but at the moment <coughs> that conversion job will fit into uh, the memory of, of the way I've written the software for the conversion because it would take a very long time. Uh, and um, at the moment, the conversion uh, for the British Isles takes 14 hours to run on the PAM board with one gigabyte of RAM. Um, and it uses quite a lot of that RAM in order to hold an index of all the places on the map, all the points. 
uh, that it needs to know about so that it can do that job quickly. So it's quite a quite an intensive process. It's, in some ways, it's a miracle that's working at all. <laughs> Oh yes, yes, and if you want to see Raspberry Pi attached to a gigantic computer screen just next to our stand, he's got Risk OSM on it, um, and we were rendering a map at a, a, A1 size. It took about, took about 25 minutes to actually <laughs> put it all together. If you're rendering a s smaller area like that, it's perfectly usable. There's quite a lot of Raspberry Pi users we've got. Yeah? Uh, two questions. The first one's probably trivial. Can you make it plot out? Uh, Portrait yes. Um, uh, yes. Is quick answer. Um, <coughs> paper dimensions. Uh, portrait. There we are. Right. So that's the trivial one. <coughs> okay, that's the trivial one. The other one is uh, you've got the whole the open street map data. Uh, how do you decide what area you're going to convert? Is it on a country basis or is it on a, a well, grid? Yeah, what we're doing, um, uh, uh, OSM Convert, um, in the manual for that, we recommend a source of downloads, uh, Geofabric. And um, if you go there, you'll find that they have downloads arranged by continent, and within each continent, they have um, downloads arranged by country. And some of the countries are even broken down. Um, you can, if you wanted to, download and convert uh, just, um, I was going to say Northumberland, but uh, <coughs> Northumberland is one of the counties which strangely hasn't been identified in their data. But you could download um, Essex, for example, and just convert that. And that would probably only take, it'd probably take only a minute or two, I would have thought, I'm not sure. Um, the Isle of Man takes about a minute, for example. Uh, Essex would take maybe five minutes, maybe a bit longer to convert. So if you wanted to have bang up-to-date data, uh, the files are updated every night, and you can go and get the latest bit of data for part of the country. What would be good, of course, would be if you live in a particular area, if I, if I made the tool then <coughs> merge the data with what you've been supplied, so you could keep your locality <coughs> up-to-date, or any particular bit you're wanting to go on holiday to, that would be nice. But again, at the moment, because the data will be incomplete because we're arranging it into squares, it won't work like that. That would be a nice improvement. I'd probably have a lot of time. Running out of time, really, because I'd better get out of the way for uh, the ARCOM um, announce you. Um, but I'm very happy to take any further questions on my stand if anyone. Uh, uh, has, has further questions. And I'd probably now get a chance to eat my lunch um, because everyone will be staying here and no one will be coming to the stand. Um, and I'm tempted to as well. Anyway, thank you. Thank you.